brightest blessings this is raven and today we are going to do a little bit of an experiment with mica powders and pva glue um first of all a quick apology for those who have been waiting for a video from me and if you weren't aware i actually had a few issues happen my car broke down in wales i cut my foot open i've been poorly again uh, it's just, it's never ending story really, isn't it? So <clears throat> I do apologise, but I have been busy putting digitals out for you guys on the Etsy shop and on Patreon. So if you want to head over to those, all the socials will be below. And yeah, essentially, I, although I haven't been able to film, I have been doing other bits and bobs, but I couldn't actually get to my craft table for two weeks pretty much because... Every time I moved, my foot would bleed and the stitches would come loose, so I had to keep off my feet. So basically, all we're doing is mixing mica powder with PVA glue, which I've done on here, just so you can see. The mica powders I use are Small Tongue brand, and I mean, any, any mica powders will be fine. These were just cheap and cheerful on Amazon for a, a massive pack. And I tend to use these more for candle making and resin work, but I do sometimes make them into a paint with some uh, alcohol solution or mix them with modelling paste and, you know, all that sort of thing. I do also sometimes mix them with white gesso or clear gesso and make it into a paint that way. But I decided we'd give it a go with PVA glue today just for something a bit different. So all I want to do with this is have it under my stencil. Now, the idea is not to have it like a paint that will block out what's behind it. I want to be able to see what's behind it. So this was the other reason for going with glue, because glue obviously dries clear generally. And if I'm putting mica powder in it, it should in theory, stay relatively clear. Now, the only issue I have found with doing it with glue is that it does tend to want to spread a lot more underneath your stencil. So just be mindful of that if you decide you're going to give this a go. So I will tend to dab and do, do little uh, brushes. And as I said, I'm not looking for solid colour. I'm quite happy for it not to be a solid colour because I want to be able to see what's underneath it. And I'm just going to mix the colours around a bit really uh, because as many of you know, autumn and fall leaves are not one solid colour generally. They will have different shades of browns and greens and oranges. And I, did, I do have an orange mica powder, but when mixed with anything, it tends to come out a bit pinky and I didn't really want that for this project. So I decided to leave those. I always try and add the lighter colours first because when I am going over things, the brown will take over. And I quite like when the colours mix a little bit. So I've also got this really dark browny colour and I just want to sort of dot that about. I don't want it everywhere because it will overpower the whole thing. So just little bits here and there is what I'm looking for. And the key with this as well, guys, is to use a normal PVA glue. Mod Podge would be fine. You don't want something that's going to dry really, really quickly because otherwise you're not going to have time to clean your stencil. So I know some people have mixed things like art glitter glue, which is an expensive way of doing it, but you could add art glitter glue if you wanted to. Um, but it does dry super quick and you will never, ever clean your stencil. 
and we're just very carefully going to lift that up and there you can see the result okay so there is a little bit of bleeding here and there but it's not it's not massive okay so i'm just going to try and pick this up without moving it on the actual page and then i give that a wipe and i tend to just wipe this side of the stencil from where it's bled through now obviously it is going to keep catching so just be gentle with it otherwise you could end up ripping your stencil okay i have also got baby wipes to hand if needed so let's do this big one shall we which way up are we going to want me yeah, that way i think Yep, yeah, happy with that. I'm going to do less of the gold on this one, I think. And more of the green. So I hope you guys are doing okay. What have you been up to? I feel a bit lost because I haven't been on or done any crafting for sort of two, two and a half weeks now. It's been a bit manic. So I'm glad to be back to it. Definitely missed being able to sit at my craft table, let me tell you. I have also been asked by one of the craft groups that I'm in on Facebook to do sort of a weekly mini tutorial um, for something small to do on a Friday. So keep your eye on that. I will be posting it on here as well. And that will be on a Friday. And it will be something small that you can follow along and do with me if you want to. Some of this dark colour. I'm not particularly looking for perfection either. I'm not overly bothered if it's perfect. Give this one a lift up. So this isn't going to be a massively long video. It's just a little one just to get me back into it. But how beautiful is that? And you can see the shimmer, hopefully. I can see the shimmer. And when it dries, it should dry, a it should dry more like this green, you see. It does also depend on how much pigment you put in. But just something a little bit different that we can do for autumn. Let's do an envelope now. I'm not too bothered about that side. Just grab my baby wipe and wipe a little just to get any excess off. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can generally see when you turn the stencil over if there's a lot coming through in one particular area. And if you don't want to be mixing colours, you can clean your stencil between each use. That's perfectly fine as well. I normally would do that if I'm 
not wanting to mix colours in this instance it really doesn't bother me if the colours mix or not so you like there that's mixed quite a bit and that's fine it just adds a bit of interest really when you think about it because otherwise you're just going to have solid colour going through there's a little bit of baby wipe stuck on it there there we go Uh, I have got a tray of water next to me as well, so that when I finish, this can go straight in the tray until I finish doing whatever I'm doing at my craft table, and then I can go and give it a really good wash and look after my stencils. It's important to do that. We've spent a lot of money on these things. We might as well look after them. Just some little touches of red. Would be nice, not too much. And you can keep going back over this, guys, as many times as you want. Just be aware that it will start to go quite muddy, okay? Some of the lighter brown. darkest colour last. Now obviously you could do this all with one solid colour and that would look just as nice. I just wanted to experiment and see how the glue would work because um, as I say I would normally do this with modelling paste or with paint uh, or dye, you know, something like Tim Holtz Distress Stain or something along those lines. Right, let's see how this envelope's turned out. A little bit too much glue here but otherwise by the time it's dried I think that is going to add a lot of interest to just what would be a bog standard envelope and I've purposely done this side with the flap so that if I want to glue this down on a page I can. So I am just going to give this a quick wash now uh, so talk amongst yourselves guys this will literally take me seconds I've got some warm water next to me in a little tray and that just means that I'm able to soak it in there for a second, give it a quick rub. I'm also going to give this a quick rub. I don't mind this being stained, that's why it's here, because you will find that the glue will ad adhere to this quite quickly. And you'll end up with shiny, shiny bits all over the place which is fine again it doesn't bother me that's why I'm using this so my dirty cloth yeah just give this another quick rub down sorry guys shaking you about and just be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to tear your stencil okay it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but I like to try and get it relatively clean between each couple, just so that then you're not getting in too much of a state with it. And this will have a really nice proper clean at the end. Sorry guys, giving you a shake. There we go, that'll do. So that's not perfectly clean, but it's clean enough for what I want to do right now. So we've done that, let's do... 
a couple of these. So these these particular smaller ones are lined on one side and plain on the back. So I'm thinking I'll do on the back with the stencil so that then we can write on that side. Let's get my tape back. And the nice thing about leaves is that it really doesn't matter which way you put them because leaves can go whichever way. They don't have um, a direction, do they, generally? So just make sure you're placing it roughly where you want it, OK? There we go. And obviously, if you clean in between every couple, it will make it a little bit easier for you to start seeing where you need to do. Because as the paint and glue and whatever else you're using builds up, it will be harder and harder for you to see where you've done and where you haven't, OK? Some nice bits of gold. I'm going to leave the green out this time, I think. And I want this particular leaf down here to be quite solidly red. I will probably put some of the darker brown around the edge, perhaps. This one that's got the tinge of gold on it. So it's all about experimenting, guys, and seeing what looks good and what doesn't. And if you don't like this technique, don't use it. <laughs> Nobody's forcing you. I like this technique. It gives me something interesting to do. It helps me use my stash. It helps me have interesting backgrounds because these, with the glue and um, paint, when I do the paint, it's um, it's not as dimensional as something like grid paste or texture paste. And it just means that I can then put embellishments and things on top of it without worrying that it's all going to fall off. Now for the darker colour, again, I'm just going to pull it in places. I don't want it everywhere, but I also want enough of it to look like it, it's supposed to be there. And you can also blend as you go too. There we go. Beautiful, look at that. Now doesn't that look lovely? I would quite happily use that as it is without putting anything on it. As you know, if you've bought any of my digitals or seen any of my journals, a lot of the embellishments I do are very plain and simple like this. Might as well do the other one while we're here. Again, just getting some of the excess off. What I sometimes do is lie it down like this. And then it doesn't matter that it's on top of the card. It's all going to dry anyway. Come out, baby wipe. And I'll just rub it like this. And that's generally enough for me between each one. 
And these you could keep as well. The baby one. I don't tend to keep these ones with the bears on, but that was all I could um, get hold of this time. It doesn't matter that that's curled a little bit from being damp under the... I just want a slightly different position than what we had before. There we go. I'm going to leave the gold out this time. So I'm have some green. But again, these could be done with any colours. And if you've got any other stencils, this would look lovely with mistletoe. Don't you think if it was a mistletoe stencil as a backing on something or just to add a bit of interest, I think it would look lovely. And obviously you can really push this into the stencil if you want to, but you will end up then, I'm just going to add a bit more green guys, it will then spill out underneath the stencil and spread a bit, so just be wary. Lighter brown. Pull that dark brown up through the green. But this is the point, guys. Experiment and see what you like and what you don't, okay? Lovely. So you can see on that one, the green has bled underneath, but that's fine. Nothing has to be perfect. What I do tend to do with these once they're dry is reuse them as mop-ups. So they never get thrown away. They just get used as mop-ups when I'm doing dyeing and things like that. But I mean, even now, you could cut the leaves out of these, provided it hasn't got a bear going through it like that one has. But you could cut that leaf out of a baby wipe and it would look lovely. Add that to something. There we go. Right, let's try a couple of these. And I think I just want the two oak leaves on this one. And I want to be the lighter brown. Lovely, happy with that because I can add bits around them. Just trying to find space to draw my things now. So we've done one of those. Um, piece of fabric, let's give that a go. Now this one will be interesting because it's obviously it's glue, so it's gonna go through. Let's 
start at the top and work our way down. Now I think with the fabric, it's not gonna seep through like it does with paper. So I want a nice red leaf. Obviously, this glue is going to seep through the fabric though, so just be mindful of that when you're drying it. Don't lie it flat on your table or whatever. Perfect. Oh, I'm in love. Let's turn the... There we go. Let's do a nice gold leaf now. Gold oak leaf. And I like this stencil because the leaves aren't huge. Sometimes you find with stencils they can be really, really big. And then it's hard to find somewhere to put them. Whereas these, you could easily cut these leaves out to make an embellishment out of. Not bothered that I've got some of the red there either, guys. That's fine. Um, let's do that. Um, let's go with green on this one. Green with a little bit of brown that was left on the... green and then let's go with the lighter brown down here Love it. Let's do this one in golden red, I think. Gold at the bottom. Like that. And get the red and we can pull the gold up with the red. Come out of my rubbish bag, Douglas. Monkey bum, leave it alone. Ooh, yes. Let's do this twiggy bit and a leaf. So let's get the dark brown. This time. Yes. Green. Gold. Yeah. 
as well. On that side. And then let's do the lighter brown down here. And then these two leaves are going off the edge. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tiny little video. I know it's not massively long and I, I am sorry about that, but I am just getting back into it. So please, please, please be gentle with me. Um, there is currently a sale going on on my Etsy at the moment. Uh, if you spend £20, you get 45% off. So do head on over. There's only a few days left on that sale. Um, and it has it has been going quite well. I've had quite a few messages from people in America asking me to send journals over and I'm sorry, I just, I can't. The postage system at the moment is so bad that it could take six months for you to get your journal. And if it doesn't arrive, I'm then liable for postage and everything else. <coughs> Excuse me. And to be perfectly honest, I just don't want to risk it. However, if you have a friend that lives in the UK and they want to order it for you and have it delivered to their house and then they send it over to you, that's perfectly fine. I know it's a bit of a pain in the bum, but I've heard so many stories of people sending out, you know, expensive journals that they've made only for them not to be received. And then, you know, it being a real issue. Um, because they've lost out on not only the item, but the money as well. So, unfortunately, that is a no-go. But the digitals are, are all for everybody all over the world. So, that's it for today, guys. Blessings to every single one of you, and I will hope to see you again soon. Blessings!